In this video, I will demonstrate how to calculate the C statistic using Excel. What is the C statistic? Well, it helps us estimate trends in time series designs, and it's a way for us to perform hypothesis testing in order to determine if there are changes from one phase to another that are statistically significant. Now, in order to do this statistic, we need a minimum of eight observations, and the analysis has two phases. We first need to examine the trend in the baseline phase data to determine if it is stable, in other words, it does not have statistical significant changes within it. And then once we can determine that the baseline phase is stable, we can move on to the next phase in which we examine the trend in the treatment phase data. And so once we look at this second phase, examining the treatment phase data, we can now determine if there are significant changes moving from baseline phase to treatment phase. And if we can say that there are significant changes, then we can say that the treatment phase is different than the baseline phase. Therefore, the initiation of the treatment has created these differences. So we're using a parametric process to test the null hypothesis that a trend is not present in the data, first in the baseline data and then moving from baseline to the experimental phase or the treatment phase. So the calculations I've done, I've created a calculator within my Excel spreadsheet, which we'll look at here in a minute, but a description of how you can do the calculations by hand and then create your own Excel spreadsheet can be found at this particular website. And this is from an article from the journal, uh, Physical Therapy Journal that you, you can utilize. So here we are in an Excel spreadsheet, and this spreadsheet is going to have kind of, as I mentioned, two phases per the analysis that we have to do. But let's take a look at, at the data and I'll kind of walk you through um, to a certain extent how the calculation works. Um, so I have 10 rows here representing 10 observations in my baseline phase and then I have listed my 10 baseline scores. So let's say this is percentage correct on some sort of a standardized test. And we want to incorporate a treatment to see if we can improve the performance on this standardized test. So again, the purpose of what we're trying to do here is test the hypothesis that there is no significant trend within first the baseline phase and then across the baseline in treatment phase. So we first need to determine if there is a significant trend in the baseline data only. We don't want them, there to be a significant trend. We want the baseline data to be stable. And then we know that any change we might see is most likely due to the treatment and not due to some trend that's happening within the baseline phase itself. So we want to make sure there is no trend in the baseline. We want it to be stable, non-significant. So the first thing we do, uh, as you can see, we have our scores listed here, as I mentioned. The first step in the calculation is to calculate a difference score. And what we're doing is calculating the difference between the first score and the second score in the series, and then the second score and the third score in the series, and so on. So we're going to have a difference score for these pairs. And so you can see there's no different score associated with the first score because it, there's no, it doesn't have anything to compare it to because it's the first score. So we have these different scores that are calculated and then we're going to take these different scores and square them. So we're kind of ignoring the signs and now we've squared these different scores. And then we're going to calculate the sum of those squared different scores. Okay, so that's the first, the first three steps. The next step we need to do is calculate the mean of the baseline scores, which is what you'll see down here. So the mean of all the baseline scores, all 10 scores, is 65.8. And so we're going to move that over into this column. Because now we're going to take the difference between each individual baseline score and the mean of all the scores. So we're going to take 60 and subtract from it 65.8, which is the mean of all the scores, and we get a different score of minus 5.8. And then we do that for each of the scores. And so you'll see a different score that's going to vary relative to what the original baseline score was. Once we have our mean difference scores of x minus x bar, we then square those mean difference scores of x minus x bar. Okay, and once we've squared those, again, we're going to sum those squared different scores. Okay. So once we have our um, just init these initial calculations done, our next step is to actually calculate the C statistic. 
Okay, and this statistic is basically the sum of those squared deviation, squared difference scores, the first value that we calculated. And then that's going to be divided by the sum of the x minus x bar squared scores. So we're going to divide that value into this value. And then we take that product and from that we subtract 1. Or I'm sorry, we, take, we subtract that product from 1, excuse me. And so that gives us a value of 0.24. Okay, the next thing we need to do is calculate the standard error of the, the values. And so the standard error is basically the square root of the variance. So we can calculate the variance of the scores and we do that um, by taking the number of subjects minus 2, dividing that by the product of the number of subjects minus 1, and the number of subjects plus 1. And that will give us a variance. We take the square root of that and that's the standard error. Okay, so that's, you don't really need to know that, but that's the mechanics of how it works. What we really want to know, and this is where the hypothesis testing process comes in, is we now need to convert this C statistic into a Z score. So in order to do that, we need to know the C statistic value itself, which we calculated as 0.24, and we need to divide that by the standard error, which we just calculated. Once we do that, that calculation, so C divided by the standard error, we get a Z score. And this Z score is 0.869. Now the hypothesis testing portion of this calculation is once we have our z-score, we're going to compare it to a critical value. And our critical value in this case is going to be a z-score associated with a p-value of 0.05, two-tailed test. And so that z-score is 1.96. So if the z-score that we calculated is greater than or goes beyond the limits of 1.96, then there is a significant trend in the baseline data. In other words, the data is changing over time at a significant rate, which is what we do not want to happen in baseline phase data. If we have a z-score that is less than 1.96, like we do in this case, we have a z-score of 0.869, then there is not a significant trend in the baseline data. The data is not changing over time. It's staying basically stable. So we want to have non-significance, and that's what we have here. So that leads us to the conclusion then that we have a stable baseline. There is no significant change occurring in our baseline over time. There's no significant trend in the baseline data. That is a good thing. That's what we want to see happen. If you were to find that you had a significant trend in the baseline data, then you have to try and investigate and figure out what could be creating that continuing trend. Maybe there's a learning effect. Maybe there's some sort of a a confounding variable that could be creating change in the baseline phase that you don't want to have happen. Um, but you can extend the baseline phase to see if you can sort that out. But that, that's not a good thing to have significant trend in the baseline data. You want it to be stable. Okay, so that's the first phase of this. So now that we have, we know we have a stable baseline, and we know the baseline probably won't influence what's going to happen in the treatment phase, we now want to move on to determine if there is a significant trend or change from baseline to the experimental or treatment phase. So now we're going to go to a very similar calculator. So I'm going to change tabs here on my calculator. And so what I do in this phase is I combine the baseline scores. Here's the first 10 scores, same baseline from before, with the treatment phase scores. So I have 10 treatment phase scores. So I list them in order, chronological order. Mm -hmm. This was the very first measurement taken. Here's the very last measurement taken in the baseline phase, observation number 10. Here's the first measurement taken in the treatment phase, last measurement taken in the treatment phase. So I've got them all listed in chronological order. And the formula works pretty much the same. We're going to do different scores, squared different scores. We're going to calculate a mean of all the scores combined, baseline and intervention. Do a, a, a mean different score, squared mean difference. That's going to give us a C statistic. It's going to also then, we can then calculate out a standard error. And then we calculate a Z score. 
So in this case, in order for us to say that the treatment has a significant effect, in other words, rejecting the null hypothesis that the treatment will, will have no effect, we need this calculated z-score to be greater than or exceed 1.96. If we have that happen, then there is a significant trend or change from the baseline data to the intervention data. In this case, we have a z-score of 4.23 that is greater than 1.96. So that indicates we have a significant change from baseline scores to treatment phase scores, intervention phase scores. So the treatment had an effect. It's changed the scores at a statistically significant rate. The changes or differences we're seeing are not due to chance. They're most likely due to the treatment. So to summarize, what we did with this particular technique is we learned how to do a, a parametric test in which we could test the null hypothesis that there is no effect of a treatment moving from baseline to treatment phase. And so we've been able to use uh, this parametric C statistic in order to, first of all, determine if the baseline phase was stable and would not unduly influence the treatment phase. And then we looked at the base, baseline and treatment phase scores together to see if there was a significant change from baseline to treatment. And using z-scores and hypothesis testing, we're able to make a conclusion about whether or not the treatment phase had an impact, or the treatment had an impact on our outcome moving from baseline to treatment. So hopefully you found this video uh, informative, and good luck using this technique on your own.